Hi everybody, I'm Jack the Rambling Rank and Turn. I hope that you're doing well. I hope you're having a great week. I'd like to discuss Shane, the Western, published in 1949, written by Jack Schaefer. One of the great Westerns and a very strong book, a great adventure story. A book that I think in uh, many ways helped remythologize the concept of the Western for modern readers. And while it's probably more famous now as a film than as a book, it is a book that I recommend reading. It's, it's very short and it is, it's a strong, strong story, strong narrative. Uh, we have Shane, the title character, this lone stranger who drifts into a place that's not even a town. There's a rancher, a couple of homesteaders, the beginnings of a town. We have a general store, a saloon, um, like a little boarding house there, a blacksmith, but there's no codified society binding all of these individuals together. Uh, and that's something that they're recognizing throughout the book and something that is sort of like hashed out between them. And if there is, of course, the question, will the big rancher push the homesteaders out and reclaim that land for open range? Or will their hard work and labor to improve the land and try to make a go of it, uh, you know, win out? Will Shane stand up and, and you know, help protect particularly the Starrett family, um, who is our window into this world? Will he help protect those homesteaders against the, you know, the bullying, violent rancher? Um, and it's based on, in, in real life, on the Johnson County War uh, in Wyoming that occurred uh, in the late 1880s and early 1890s. But it is a book that, as I said, helps kind of remythologize the Western, and here's why. <clears throat> he was tall and terrible there in the road, looming up gigantic in the mystic half-light. He was the man I saw that first day, a stranger, dark and forbidding forging his lone way out of an unknown past in the utter loneliness of his own immovable and instinctive defiance. He was the symbol of all the dim, formless imaginings of danger and terror in the untested realm of human potentialities beyond my understanding. The impact of the menace that marked him was like a physical blow. And that's our description of Shane. <laughs> once, once we've gotten to know him and know what a friendly guy and what a kind man he can be as he works as a, a farmhand with the Starrett family and, you know, enjoys eating the, the food with them and eating pie and, uh, you know, teaching uh, the young son there certain things, Bob, certain things. Um, that's, our, that's Bob who, who has, you know, idolizing hero worship of Shane. That's his description of Shane at the end. What a menacing figure he can cut as he prepares to go to the great showdown. Um, and that, that's what I mean when I say it remythologized the Western. But um, it, it's, it's a Western, it's very, the, the characterizations are very subtle. And the shading between who's good and who's bad is very, very subtle. You have to look for it to, to sort of see some of the, the quick little touches that exist between almost like the slate black of charcoal and the blank white of the paper. That there, there are, you know, just, thin lines of gray shading that run in between those uh, with, with these characters. Uh, but, it, but it, you know, an attentive reading is a rewarding reading with Shane. Um, and I think surprisingly so for many readers. We have uh, famously one character, Chris, who is uh, early on a, 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 a farmhand, ranch hand, with the, the big wealthy rancher, ultimately turns out to not be, you know, a terrible individual. But for the most part, we're focused on the Starrett family. We're focused on um, Joe and Marion Starrett, who are married. They have a child, Bob. Uh, and Bob is our narrator. It's curious that he is, it's very clear that he is narrating these events f as memories from his childhood, that he's using a vocabulary um, that is beyond that of just a, you know, eight or nine year old child. Um, that he, there are things he remembers from the eyes of a child but the, the, way, the language he uses is not that of, necessarily, that of a child exclusively. Um, and it works, it's effective. He's an effective narrator, an effective voice. And I think a lot has been made of the um, potentiality, <laughs> the potential romance between Marion Starrett and Shane. I think particularly that was played up in the film adaptation. Uh, and great performance by Gene Arthur and a strong performance by Alan Ladd. And this, this question of, you know, is there a, is there a, uh, an attraction between them that from the text seems pretty clear. Um, and there's also, you know, people have come, I think readers have commented on the, um, the distance of the relationship between Joe and Marion stared at times, the husband and wife, that at times they, he recognizes that she might be attracted to Shane or that Shane might be attracted to her. Um, and there is this, uh, it, it's not quite jealousy, but there's this recognition of, of this relationship between them. But there's also a, uh, a, a I don't want to say tension, 
But there's a relationship between Joe and Shane, Joe Starrett and Shane. And there is a famous uh, scene where they dig out a stump that is on the farm. And I believe that that scene was uh, referenced in um, Avengers 2 Age of Ultron <laughs> with the wood chopping. But here, here it goes. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Father climbed slowly out of the hole. He walked to the stump and placed a hand on the rounded bowl and patted it like it was an old friend, and he was perhaps a little sorry for it. Shane was with him, across from him, laying a hand gently on the old hard wood. They both looked up, and their eyes met and held, as they had so long ago in the morning hours. The silence should have been complete. It was not because someone was shouting, a high-pitched, wordless shout. I realized that the voice was mine, and I closed my mouth. The silence was clean and wholesome, and this was one of the things you could never forget, whatever time might do to you in the furrowing of the ears. An old stump on its side, with root ends making a strange pattern against the glow of the sun, sinking behind the far mountains, and the two men looking over it into each other's eyes. I thought they should join the hands so close on the bowl of the stump. I thought they should at least say something to each other. They stood quiet and motionless. Um, so there, there is this, uh, there is this relationship, friendship, interaction between Joe Starrett and Shane that I think also is, is interesting and maybe something that modern readers pick up on a little bit more. Um, but as I said, it really is a, it's a strong book, it's a strong Western, and it has, uh, I don't want to read the descriptions of like the, the actual fights and, and shootouts because they're marvelously written and I, I, I think that's one of the great rewards of the book. Um, but the characterization is also strong. Uh, so, Shane, Strong Western. Now, I had mentioned it is based on the Johnson County War, which is a real event um, that occurred between roughly 1889 and 1893, where a group of extremely wealthy ranchers and stock growers formed the Wyoming Stock Growers Association, WSGA, basically imported gunmen um, from other parts of the country, not just Wyoming, to form a, a gang that went out and would murder uh, homesteaders or small ranchers, including um, Nate Champion, who was one small rancher who tried to organize against them, where they laid siege to his cabin, um, murdered people who were inside of it, lit it on fire, and then murdered him when he ran out. They, um, there was a couple, uh, um, Ella Watson and Jim Averill, where they, where they took them and they just hung them from trees and murdered them. Um, and so this was a, a real thing that occurred. And, Schaefer does not show us that side of it. He shows us, of course, good and bad. Uh, Shane and, and the Starrets and the Homesteaders win out. Um, but in real life, it, it, it was a dark episode, uh, you know, in, in history. Not on the level of the genocide of the Native Americans or slavery, but a dark episode nonetheless, um, particularly when the Homesteaders sort of banded together and stood up to this WSGA and its gang, of murderers, um, the cavalry was actually called in to rescue the WSGA. Uh, so it's based on the Johnson County War. A great book on that would be Banditti of the Plains by Asa Mercer, which was written, I believe, in 1894. I, I read it in college, and, and a, that's a strong, like, contemporary book um, that doesn't necessarily mythologize the conflict the way that Shane or the Virginian infamously does. Um, but in terms of other Westerns, books that, you know, I, I, I think of that aren't necessarily typical Westerns, we have, the obvious comparison is True Grip by Charles Portis, where in this case we have another child narrator, uh, but it's uh, a young woman, a girl, uh, Maddie, and uh, who's just fantastic. And of course we have Rooster Cogburn, as who's... <laughs> Maybe there's a, a way in which we can imagine a grizzled, angry old Shane becoming Rooster Cogburn. I don't know if that holds up. Um, another great writer of westerns would be Elmore Leonard. Most of his are set in uh, the southwest, Arizona, New Mexico, and he wrote all of them using Arizona Highways magazines to understand the landscape um, marvelously well. Uh, another western writer, someone who maybe doesn't always get mentioned, would be Willa Cather. Her book, A Lost Lady, uh, shows um, sort of what, what, what's happening in the generations after the homesteaders. As we have the railroad, as we have, uh, you know, families and towns that are established and the relationships. And, you know, when I mentioned sort of the, the love triangle romantic tension, that being a great part of, uh, of uh, A Lost Lady. Great strong novel by Willa Cather. Um, 
The hero worship that young Bob Starrett has for Shane is sort of mirrored in Ron Hansen's assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford, except that here the hero worship, of course, leads to a very dark um, uh, climax in Denouement, whereas with Shane it's, it's heroic. Uh, Stephen Crane wrote some stories that are set sort of as westerns. The Blue Hotel, I think, in some ways mirrors aspects of the insider-outsider status um, and the violence that could, you know, just occur at the drop of a hat. Um, that's a strong, strong story by Stephen Crane. There are elements of Westerns, I think, that are drawn from the Viking sagas, including Njal's saga. And I think one of the more interesting things about the Western is the way in which some of those mythologies around the Western became aspects that were used in crime fiction where we have sort of the detective or the protagonist who has a code or is sort of this lone, you know, self-righteous or righteous person who's going to, to uh, settle accounts. And books that sort of uh, intimated that would be James Crumley, Crumley's Last Good Kiss, which is set in sort of the Mountain West area. Um, Dog Soldiers by Robert Stone, which feels like a, a, a Western for the Vietnam era. And then even books where the, the sense of Shane being a reluctant gunslinger, a man who, who felt like he has you know, said goodbye to that life but has to strap on the six-shooter one last time, is of course mirrored in the crime you know, trope of the, uh, the burglar or the criminal who has to pull one last job, such as Black Wings Has My Angel by Elliot Chase. Uh, but... Um, yeah, that would be the Western. I will add that this volume by Library of America does have Warlock by Oakley Hall, which might be the single greatest Western ever written. So, Shane, yeah, I, I recommend it. Let me know if you've read it or if you're just a fan of the film. So, hope everybody's doing well. Thanks.